Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. My name is Joe. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. We'd love to have you on in future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out in the future. If this is not your first time here, what the fuck are you doing? You're back again. This channel fucking sucks. Did you subscribe? Are you that kind of weirdo? Well, thank you, I guess, if you did. Thank you very much again for checking in. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some Adam Antipater goodness. Continuing on that series that I've been doing of how-tos, a crash course in the basics, an introduction to Master Rule 5, all of that good stuff in there. We're going to talk to you a little bit about Adam Antipater's, how they work, a little bit behind the lore, of at least what we have available, the current cards, some of the cards are being played with, and what we recommend running and what we recommend kind of just ignoring out of there. Do enjoy the video. If you do need any more assistance with this, drop it down in the comments and we'll try and help you out. I'd love to maybe get some combo videos going on in these at some point, although there are plenty out there. This deck is really, really exciting. This is a deck you should definitely know how to play with, or at the very least, play against. We'll get stuck into the video now for you. Adam Antipater debuted as an archetype in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in the Secret Slayer set in April 2020, which also contained the sassy big golden pimp lord Eldritch and a waifu tax fairy deck, Ricker. For a little bit of backstory, the Adam Antipater chums go out on a nice little excavation together, finding lots of rocky boys along the way, and a deck plays, as you can imagine, just like that. Adam Antipater's at the time of recording looked to be one of the best combo decks of the year so far and look to set light to the meta once the competitive scene resumes in person, of course, and not just online, as they have done so in a variety of high-level online tournaments since their release. The archetype is essentially based around tuna monsters that look like geologists as well as the non-tuna crystal monsters that appear to be a sealed version of the Risen Synchro Monsters. So what is it that's making Adamantipater so popular and how is it played? Well, the Adamantipater deck is an extremely forgiving archetype. It's very resourceful with minimal effort involved. The deck constantly digs for more and more extenders and as a result, the pilot usually has a large number of options at their disposal. This will of course favour top players who will use these options in the most optimal manner, but the learning curve for the deck isn't as steep as many other combo centric decks. As such, it's very easy to learn, but to learn well can be somewhat challenging in terms of knowing what the most optimal line of play may be, although this is a commitment that can be applied to many other decks in the game. The aim of the deck is, generally speaking, to keep digging and finding rocky resources to keep their explosive plays going, abusing the already broken Lego monsters amongst others and overwhelming the opponent with either ways to stop their plays if going first or absolutely smashing their boards to bits if going second. The monsters are more or less split up into three core groups, the tuners, the non-tuners and the synchros. The Adamantopeta tuners all have two effects. The first of which is to special summon themselves, which varies from monster to monster. And the second of these effects allows you to excavate the top five cards of your deck and special summon level four or rock non-tuner monsters from those excavated cards, an effect which appears on all of these tuner monsters. The non-tuner monsters also have two main effects. There's a bit of a pattern going on here. The first of these is an effect which triggers when they're special summoned by an Adamantipater card. Each of these effects differs from card to card. The second of these is an effect that can be activated while in the graveyard that puts a synchro that is in your graveyard or one you control of the same attribute back into the extra deck then puts itself onto the top of the deck. The Synchro Monsters can all also excavate the top 5 cards, but they do not summon one of the revealed monsters. Instead, they have individual effects, which we'll cover later in this video. The Synchro Monsters also have secondary effects that are live during the opponent's turn, if you have a monster with the same attribute in your graveyard. Again, something that we will cover later in this video. 
the archetype itself overall is incredibly well rounded and has an abundance of indirect support, some of which we will cover later in this video, much like some of the previous statements, along with the previously mentioned details. The advantage of this means that there can be some quite creative choices taking place across the deck, varying a good chunk of cards from person to person according to their taste. So we're going to start off the next section by covering the main deck, Adamantipated Monsters, followed by the extra deck, then the spells and traps that are in archetype support. I'll be reading these effects in a mildly compacted method. After all, this is a crash course video, and you'll be wanting to get the information thick and fast and be on your way to mastering the deck. Before we do proceed though, I'd like to note that as I'm reading these methods differently to the actual text, I will be showing the images on screen for your perusal so that you can see the exact wording. We know how important this can be in determining interaction, but we also know what all Yu-Gi-Oh players so probably won't be reading those cards anyway. So we're going to start off with Adamantipator Analyzer. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. During your main phase, you can excavate the top 5 and special summon one level 4 or lower non-tuner rock monster. Then place the rest of the cards on the bottom of the deck in any order. Each effect is a hard one per turn. Following that, we're going to cover Adamantipator Researcher, probably the most expensive card in the main deck. If you control a rock monster except Researcher, you can special summon this from your hand. During the main phase, you can excavate the top five, special summon one level four or lower non-tuner rock monster, then place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. Can you see a pattern here? Each effect is a hard one per turn. We also have Adamantipator Seeker. So if you control an Adamantipator monster except Seeker, you can special summon it from your hand. And then during the main phase, you can excavate the top five, special summon one level four or lower, non-tuner rock monster, then place the rest at the bottom of the deck in any order. Each effect is hard once per turn. Next, we're going to move on to the crystal variants of each of these. There is also a theme running there in terms of colors, which can also be seen in the artwork. We're going to start off with Dragite, so if this card is special summoned by an Adamantipator card, you can draw one card. If it's in your graveyard, you can target a Water Synchro monster in your graveyard or on your field and return it to the extra deck and then place this on the top of the deck. Each effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Crystal Raptite, so if it's special summoned by an Adamantipator card, you can place one rock monster from your hand or graveyard onto the top of the deck. If it's in your graveyard, you can target a Wind Synchro Monster in your graveyard or on your field and return it to the extra deck and then place this card on the top of the deck. Each effect is a hard one per turn. And lastly, we have Leonite. So if this card is special summoned by an Adamantipator card, you can place one Adamantipator card from your hand or graveyard onto the top of the deck. And much like the others, if it's in your graveyard, you can target a Fire Synchro Monster in your graveyard or on your field and return it to the extra deck and then place this card on the top of the deck. Each effect is again a hard once per turn. Most builds tend to run three copies of each of the Tuna Monsters and none or very few of the Crystal Monsters. And if they do, it's usually just a single copy of Drag Eye. That is, if they run any of those at all. Next up, we are going to take a quick run through the In Archetype Extra Deck Monsters. We're going to start off with Adamantipator Risen, Drag Eye. It's a level 8 which requires one Tuna and then one or more non-Tuna Monsters. During your main phase, you excavate the top five and then return cards your opponent controls up to the number of rock monsters that you excavated and then place the excavated cards on the bottom of the deck in any order. When your opponent activates a spell or trap card or effect, while you have a water monster in your graveyard, you can quick effect, negate the activation, and if you do, you destroy that card. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Following that, we have Adamantipate Arisen, Raptite. So this is a level 6 that requires a tuner and then one or more non-tuner monsters. So during your main phase, you can excavate the top 5 and special summon one excavated rock monster in defense position. Then place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. During your opponent's turn, if a wind monster is in your graveyard, quick effect, you can banish a card in the opponent's grave. Each effect is again a hard once per turn. And then following that, we have Adamantipay Arisen, Leonite. This is also a level 6, much like Raptite. It also requires a tuner and then one or more non-tuner monsters. So during your main phase, you can excavate the top 5 and add one excavated Adamantipay card to your hand and then place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. During the opponent's turn, if you have a fire monster in your graveyard, quick effect, you can special summon a rock monster 
from your graveyard. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Most extra decks will include a single copy of Raptite and Dragite. Few use Leonite. Next, we're going to be covering the direct Adamantopeia support cards, including one of which is not yet released, but is expected to drop into the TCG in Rise of the Duelist. We're going to start off with Adamantopeia Laputite. So all rock monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense, and then once per turn during your main phase, you can stack up to 5 Adamantopeia cards from your deck onto the top of your deck in any order. Following that, we've got Adamantopater Signs, so you can special summon a rock monster from your graveyard, and if it's an Adamantopater, you can put a level 4 or lower rock monster from your deck onto the top of your deck. We also have Adamantopater Relief, so you can tribute as many Adamantopater monsters as you'd like, and then destroy that number of cards in the field, plus 1. Next, we have Adamantopater Resonance. So when a monster effect is activated while you control an Adamantopater Synchro, negate the activation and destroy that monster. And then lastly, we have Adamantopater Friends, which is not yet released into the TCG. So you can excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of rock monsters you control, plus 5. Then add one excavated rock monster whose level is less than or equal to the number of excavated cards, and then the rest go onto the bottom of the deck in any order. After this, you can only special summon rock monsters for the rest of the turn. Most Adamantopater builds will only really run Adamantopater signs, although this does vary somewhat depending on taste as always. It's not yet known if friends will see significant play or not. As you might expect with a deck that can dig so well, it has access to a very diverse group of cards. Adamantopate is act like a glue for all the existing rock monsters we've seen abused by likes of Block Dragon Burning Abyss as well as some other spicy techs that have come into the fold over the last few weeks. It's important to note before we get started though that this list is not exhaustive. There is an absolute abundance of options out there for you. We're going to cover just some of the ones that I think are more prominent and more important. So firstly, we're going to start off with Block Dragon, the Dragon Ruler of LEGO. This card is absolutely bonkers, and it was a matter of time before one deck fully broke it. Block Dragon is an incredibly explosive card, offering a huge beat stick and netting you free advantage when it goes from the field to the grave, setting up easy lines of play and then resurrecting itself essentially for free. Don't be surprised if we see this one hit on the limited and forbidden list soon enough. Following that, we have Doki Doki. Whatever you do, don't go playing the game of the same name. Trust me on this one. Another card that has seen some fringe play in conjunction with Block Dragon outside of the deck. This card allows you to easily tutor out cards from the deck, giving easy access to resources that can be worked into the likes of Needle Fiber and fill in the graveyard with bodies that you can use to your advantage over time. We also have, I think it's Gigantes or Gigantes, I'm not really sure what the correct pronunciation is, but we're going to roll with it. So, who knew that this dude will be seeing a resurgence of play in 2020? He offers easy access to rank 4 plays, synchro plays, link fodder, is easily searchable, and can even blow out some back row if needed. This is one of the most underrated cards that is being used in this deck. We also have Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line, a free token generator, one of the best remaining tuners in the game, ripe and ready to be abused. There's also Kawaki Meru Guardian, which is another level 4 rock body that has seen a resurgence in play, giving you an easy interrupt to use during your opponent's turn, as well as being a very respectable 1900 beta, all at a cost of revealing one solitary rock monster in your hand during each of your end phases. That shouldn't be too hard in this deck. We also have the honor mat cards. We've seen dwarf go 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 glove and other absurdly named monsters enlisted into the deck, allowing for easy extenders that fit the ongoing theme of the deck, and cards like honor matter pickup being used to search them out. We should also note Ten Years Spirit, Adhara, another one of these groups of cards that keeps floating about into competitive play. The Ten Years Spirits have bounced in and around. It is a level 1 earth tuner that's a free special summon. This was always going to find a way to creep into this deck. And in line with my earlier comments, we also have Christron Halkifibrax, or Needle Fiber, as you may have heard me refer to it earlier. This card is absolutely insane, no doubt about it. Facilitating all kinds of wacky combos, generating tons of advantage, and setting up the opponent for a rough time. This isn't the only deck 
that is and will continue to abuse the power of this card, but it's one of the ones making the best use of the filthy lines of play that it sets up. I should note at this time I also have a needle fiber combo out there that will be up on the channel. I'll pop a link on the screen now so you can just click on that and watch it later. It's just one very basic combo that draws you three, ends on a Borrelide Savage and a Hyper Librarian, all off, Jet Synchron and a single discard. We also have Link Cross, make tokens, make insane plays, win. We also have Union Carrier, largely this is used to cheat around block dragon but it can also be used to set up the buster dragon locking the opponents out of their extra deck another nail in the coffin with an already insane starting board we have ip mascarena another form of interruption at the least or a great way to protect the monsters you summon with it one of the finest link monsters in the game and lastly we have gallant granite it says add rocks let's just hope they don't bring back redox Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, learning about those absolutely crazy Rocky boys that everyone is going absolutely wild for at the moment. Extenders after extenders after extenders, extension after extension after extension. This is definitely one of the most exciting combo decks that we've seen in a little while. It is dominating an awful lot of the online play, and it is definitely a deck you should be equipped to either play or play against. Hopefully this video has given you some insight. It won't be perfect. It won't have everything that you need to know, but it will give you that really basic outline that you need to know how to play against this deck. Thank you very much again for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe, and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.